We're losing the war badly. Parents don't even know what's in their kids' schools. I got to go up and down the bleachers and show parents that are not, oh my God, you know, and then, then they're scared to stand up because they'll be labeled or attacked like me. Welcome, everybody, to Conversations That Matter. I'm your host, Alex Newman, Senior Editor at The New American Magazine. We have uh, an extraordinary guest and an extraordinary story for you today. Um, This man who we have with us today, Terry Newsom, he is the head of Illinois Parents Involved in Education. Uh, That's part of U.S. Parents Involved in Education. Uh, Dr. Duke and I both serve on the advisory board. It's a wonderful organization. We're going to get the feds out of school, out of education policy. And uh, Terry is in the People's Republic of Illinois, (laughs) one of the most difficult environments for conservatives, for Christians, for um, people who just don't like tyranny and don't like uh, the indoctrination of children. And so Terry's on the front lines up there. He lives in a western suburb of Chicago with his wife and his uh, kids and um, trying to stand up for his kids. And he has been more viciously and more ruthlessly attacked than just about anybody I have ever seen. Now, he he knows some of this, right? He was raised, raised in the southwest side of Chicago in a Democratic Union family. Uh, he registered Republican in 2013. Uh, and he actually didn't become politically active until his kids entered the freshman year of high school. But a- after he figured out what they were teaching the kids with the, the porno and the critical race theory, the, the anti-police extremism, uh, he decided he needed to get involved. And uh, he became a very vocal parent in confronting the school board, which in today's upside down world makes you a terrorist somehow. Uh, and, and boy, did they label him a terrorist. You, you, you won't believe uh, some of what happened. And so he confronted the school board for the first time in 2021. Uh, I'll let him tell the story. But Antifa has come after him. The Soviet Poverty Law Center has come after him. The Department of Homeland Security has come after him. Uh, it's just incredible. But now uh, more and more friends are coming to his defense. Uh, he's got multiple members of Congress. We'll talk about this who have uh, come alongside of him to help him fight back. And of course, he's been everywhere. He's been on Newsmax, OAN, NTD, uh, Frank Speech TV, Real America's Voice, uh, all, all the great ones, all the local ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, Epic Times. Uh, he's becoming something of a celebrity now. Uh, he even spoke at an event uh, where uh, Charlie Kirk and I were speakers in Chicago not too long ago. Terry, it's an honor to have you on the program. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for what you're doing. Um, give us some of the background, Terry. Why did you, uh, I mean, even before we get into what the left did and what they are doing, why did you decide you had to get involved in this, knowing full well that you were going to basically be stirring up a hornet's nest? Yeah, it was right in the, at the peak of force masking in Illinois with Governor Prickster. Sorry, I said that wrong. Pr- Pritzker. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was in the heat of that. While I learned about these pornographic books, which I and I was astounded that this stuff was given to our children in the school, and it was it was allowed. And they the, the folks on the left and the radicals in Illinois were insisting it's not pornography. So when I started this fight, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get a bunch of you know like people from the right, independents and left saying this is wrong. And what I learned is the parents on the right were too scared because of what you know eventually happened to me, which I was new at this, so I didn't expect it. You know, I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, and then the people on the left, if they're still on the left in this day and age, you know, I was raised a Democrat, my parents, and you know, if you're still a Democrat in this day and age, you're not supporting our country. You can't be supporting. Either you're very ignorant or you're purposefully trying to destroy our country. So those people attacked us. Parents on the right were scared, and I was kind of shocked it was – I was front and center, you know, with this with this attack. With some people, some parents are supporting me, but I was a little bit more more vocal, and uh, it made me a big target. Yeah, and and a big target is kind of a, an understatement. I mean, the the SPLC wrote a hit piece on you, Pantifa. Actually, Pantifa came to an event where you and I and Charlie Kirk and some others were speaking. Uh, they had a big yeah. mob of them with the purple hair and the ear nose yeah. rings and everything, uh, you know, protesting and being goofy. Um, and, and they even put you on the terrorist list. So, so you couldn't even properly get on airplanes anymore without all kinds of additional uh, scrutiny. Talk about the the backlash you faced after you started. And, and I should mention, too, I hope you don't mind, Terry, but you, you went through all this while you were enduring your own personal battle. You were fighting cancer. Yeah. In fact, I, I think you still are fighting yeah. cancer. Um, so talk about the backlash, how they came after your job. They came after you, know, you personally. They called you. A ter- talk about what happened. Yeah, they, they uh, 
especially I think throughout the country, but especially in Illinois, Antifa is tightly coupled with the Democratic Party. You know, in my school district, Sean Caston's kids attend the same high school. I don't know if you know who Sean Caston is, uh, Congressman Nancy Pelosi, radical leftist. His kids go to my school. He came after me, you know. Uh, the NAACP wrote, you know, here in Chicago and, you know, claiming that we hate gay kids and, you know, we, you know, we don't care if they die. If they, I still don't understand the correlation between oral sex pictures and suicide between a gay community. And then I, it just makes no sense. We are not book banners. We are porn banners. We just don't want any of that stuff in our children's school. And, and, and as soon as I stood up at the board meeting, I made big posters of those images, which set them all off because People really don't know from our side unless you show them because we can't show them on the media. We can't, you're not allowed to show them. So all they hear is that people like you and me hate gay kids. We don't care if they die. And so they keep, they keep hitting us over and over with that fake narrative. And people start to believe it, even some on our side. So I showed those pictures. And then the superintendent and the board said, going forward, no more posters are allowed, even though the left used to always bring their posters because it was shown on the camera and WGN was there. And I exposed them. So they went nuts. And all their leftist supporters started coming after me. Then it's creeped into their little network of Antifa. Then the Southern Poverty Law Center uh, author is from my neighborhood. And he's friends with all those Democrats. He wrote a five-page ridiculous hit piece on me. Even even showing pictures with Alex Stein, the comedian, as if that's supposed to, it's supposed to make me look bad. I think it was kind of funny. And so he did that to try to discredit me. And then after that story came out uh, November, um, last November, and then they started hitting me on Twitter saying I tried to overthrow the government. You know, uh, they had images of me at uh, January 6th, which I did nothing wrong. I, you know, I was in my room before people went into to the Capitol. And so they kept tagging the FBI. And then when I was going to America Fest, Charlie Kirk's event, me and my family learned I was put on the quad S list, including my children and wife, out of the blue. And so explain what that is, Terry. I don't think a lot of people know what that is. Explain what that means. Yeah, quad quad S list. You have to go extreme, uh, intense security. And, and one of the agents said, uh, you know, like, I was on a t- domestic terrorist watch list with real, real bad people, and he said it must have been a mistake, you know. And that's what we thought at first. And um, and then it happened on the way back. Then I went to CPAC and even got worse. Not only did I have to go through the enhanced security, they started sending five agents to the gate to yank me off before I get on the plane with the undercover agent, TSA agent, standing there looking at me. And I get on the plane. I have to tell everyone I'm not a terrorist. All right. I'm one of the school board dads. I was at January 6th. I didn't do anything. You know, half the people left. Half gave me a dirty look. So, uh, <laughs> and, and then after um, um, I, I spoke to Matt Gates' attorney, he wrote a demand letter, which I shared with you guys, which I was so grateful because there's no help in Illinois. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing a podcast behind enemy lines here in Illinois to be a Republican, me and a buddy. And that's how we are. We're behind enemy. We have no help here. So Matt Gates wrote this demand letter to Ray Mayorkas and Garland demanding to know why they did this to my family. Um, they asked four or five questions, including, am I a list because I'm a school board parent? Am I on a list because I uh, peacefully attended January 6th with 2 million other people? Are you maintaining lists? So they acknowledged back in March that they did receive this letter, but it's been crickets ever since. Nothing. They didn't respond. So you would think if somebody rightfully put me on a list as a potential terrorist risk, they would respond to Matt, right, and say, well, yeah, Mr. Newsom did X, Y, and Z. So after he sent that letter and then Congressman Troy Neal sent a letter to the TSA because he's on the Transportation Committee, when I was flying after that for work, poof, I'm off the list. So no one told me I was on the list. Nobody told me I was off the list, which is still a secret. You know, who has the authority to put me on a list because I have a story from Southern Poverty Law Center or because people tag the FBI on Twitter? Is it that easy? Because if I did something wrong at January 6th, I'd be arrested, right? Yeah. If, if I did something wrong in the school board that threatened the lives or anything, I'd have been arrested. So I didn't do anything wrong. They didn't respond to any of their questions, which makes me believe I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I know I didn't do anything wrong, but I'm saying from their perspective, they could have at least gave their point of view and saying, well, this is why we did it to the congressman. They didn't. And then all of a sudden I'm off. Yeah. And uh, they also tried to get you fired from your job. In fact, the last time you and I were together, you said they were still doing it. Right? They're tagging yeah. your employer on Twitter. They're they're trying to make uh, your employer fire you. Um, you know, you don't have to mention any names or anything. But w- what are they doing with that? Why are they trying to get you fired? 
Um, well, it, actually, it's more than me now. Um, you know, since that those twelve parents groups came on, um, they're going after these mothers, really, really single mothers, moms for America. I mean, bro, there's all these Antifa guys threatening their work and stuff. I think their attention got diverted to these moms who are becoming active in the western suburbs. I mean, the threats they're getting and the phone calls I could hear and the messages at their work and one of the poor mothers, they put eighty posters around her school where you know, her and her kid lives pictures of her with nazis and stuff you know she she overcame drug problem five six years ago right she's been straight since raising her child and she gotten active just like you know many parents and they're brood they're putting this up and you know about when she got in trouble before and it's brutal here and then i know they went to a police a number of times and there's no support here even with my stuff on Twitter, right? They take down Republicans all the time. I, I sent emails to the CEO of Twitter, the head of safety and security. Oh, it's part of the public discourse. Oh, but on the other side, you will knock people down immediately if they say something sideways by a leftist. Yeah, that's truly amazing. Well, uh, when we get back on the other side, Terry, I want to talk about um, your recent trip to Washington, D.C. You've been able to meet with a lot of lawmakers who are taking an interest in this kind of terrorism and abuse and, and uh, haranguing of citizens who are concerned about their children, concerned about what's happening at the government. So uh, we'll be right back, folks. Stay with us right here on Conversations That Matter. I certainly would not want a constitutional convention. I mean, whoa. Who knows what would come out of that? It isn't the Constitution that's the problem. It is the people who ignore the Constitution. What we need are just more people that would read the one we have. It's up to us to hold our elected officials accountable. Who understand the Constitution and are willing to take a stand when necessary. Terry, you were just in Washington, D.C. You had meetings with uh, a lot of lawmakers, a lot of senators. I, I see pictures. Here's some pictures. We'll put them up on the screen. You with uh, Senator Lee, uh, with Senator Matt Gates. You've got Senator Josh Hawley here. Um, you met with uh, members of the uh, Homeland Security Oversight. So uh, you are fighting back and you're finding a lot of sympathy among uh, policymakers and lawmakers in Washington, D.C., even if uh, you don't find much in um, in your state capital there. Talk about uh, what's been going on in your recent trip to Washington, D.C. with the Center for Self-Governance. Sure. It, it was exciting. It was with Mark Herr, Center for Self-Governance, and a number of other individuals who've been impacted by the government as well. I was kind of the, the parent voice right and we had a number of these meetings set up to share our personal experiences on what's going on and uh there was great interest from our side tremendous interest which is exciting finally and you know the southern poverty and law center is a nonprofit, and they've 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 been working really as, as an extension of the democratic party what do they do is they come and attack us they attack either individuals either our politicians our organizations I'm, I'd be surprised if you're not on that on that list, you know. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have given an idea. So, so <laughs> um, it's kind of a badge of honor, in. though, at this point, Terry. As yeah, you know, that's all the what cool I was people told after I point. got that. I was told that I'm like, I don't know, I don't, I don't really want this badge of honor, but that's what everyone on the, on the right that's been in this for a while told me. And and they're trying to destroy our reputation and credibility. And and this last move with the you know Moms for America, Pi, Parents of All the. Uh, education no left turn they did this on purpose for the upcoming election to try to take our feet out from under us right and take away the credibility so like some of the events some of these other mom group moms for america they're trying to run events well what happens these leftists and antifa send the venues oh they're on the, the watch list now they're on the southern poverty law hate list and people if they don't know who the southern poverty law center is then they're thinking they're thinking they have credibility when they don't have any credibility and at the same time, you know, this list has the KKK on it. Uh, they don't have uh, Black Lives Matter, Antifa. So they're being used as an extension of the Democratic Party while they're maintaining a nonprofit status. They should not have that nonprofit status. And that really got the attention of some of our politicians to, to look at, you know, the nonprofit status. So hopefully from some of the things that we heard there, they are going to actively go forward and, and, and start investigating in some of the ways they said they were going to. Yeah. And, and to be clear, this is such a partisan organization. I mean, um, you know, I, I did uh, an intelligence report on the SPLC for the law enforcement intelligence brief, which goes out to every police office, every police chief and sheriff in the country. And uh, what I found in my investigation is that this is really an extreme fringe group. Uh, they, they And they're very dishonest, too. They labeled a practicing Muslim, one of the top anti-Muslim extremists. 
Uh, they labeled a, a lady I know, full-blooded Cherokee Indian, married to a full-blooded Indian, director center of Sacagawea, as the leader of the anti-Indian movement. And in this whole screed, they never bothered to mention she was a Cherokee married to an Indian, and that her entire life's work has been dedicated to helping the uh, Native American community. They labeled uh, the great Dr. Carol Swain uh, an enabler of white supremacy. Of course, she's a, a black law professor who's uh, taught at some of the most prestigious universities in the country. Uh, and then they find people like... Um, uh, Bill Ayers, uh, the terrorist who who blew up, uh, who, whose terror organization murdered police officers, bombed the Capitol, bombed the State Department, bombed the Pentagon. And they say he was an anti-war activist and we should learn about education from him. So uh, it really is a nakedly partisan group and they work very closely with Democrats. Um, I, I'm glad to hear that uh, there's interest in Capitol Hill on this. So uh, we've had Mark Herr on this program before. Uh, and, and years ago, he was working with members of Congress on this label lynching. Um, exactly yes. what you just described, Terry, where they put a label on you um, and, and then they use that to try to get you fired from your job, to try to make venues cancel your events and, and all the rest of it. Um, so you mentioned uh, that there was that this was well received on Capitol Hill. Um, where does this go from here? I mean, what are conservatives, what are Republicans going to do to fight back against these kinds of very dishonest and dangerous tactics? Sure. So, you know, this is an extension of the labels kind of that what Mark was working on. It'd be great if you have him out, out here again, too. But it, so what Mark, we're going to have Mark quarterback a meeting with all the other parents organizations to come back in late, late September, October to go to the Hill, right? To sh bring these terrorist racist moms with us, right? <laughs> There's very few guys. It's mostly mothers. I mean, as you know, it's mostly moms doing this battle. Dad's got to, you guys got to stand up and help our moms and grandmas fight. So we're going to go back and meet with Congress and, and have give them a chance to talk, you know, a little bit about the organizations and show how absurd it is firsthand to, to the media and the press and people of these moms being awful, awful people. You know, they're labeled as hate groups, Nazis. We're trying to ban books. We don't care if they, it's all everything's lies. They lie about the whole narrative. And then now they, they get a rubber stamp from the SPLC, like to certify the lies. And we have to fight back against that. And, um, um, I, ho I hope, you know, you know, how politicians are, I hope they're going to go forward some of the things that they said they're going to do to explore their options to help us because we're losing this battle and we need to take, you know, SPLC out of uh, labeling us, falsely labeling us as something or not to help the Democrats. Yeah. Uh, so, Terry, let's talk about uh, some of what you do. Now, you you lead the Illinois chapter of U.S. Parents Involved in Education. Talk a little bit about that. And then uh, you mentioned you're starting a podcast uh, behind enemy yeah. lines. So talk, talk about your work, what you do and uh, and yeah. how people can find you. Yeah. So so I'm uh, I'm going to reschedule the first two events. I think we did a little story with you, right, that Antifa canceled the first two we're going to mm -hmm. we're going to reschedule it again and i'm going to pull in the mul the moms groups the other splc mother groups again and we'll probably hit more even now so that they're on the list um uh, truth lies in american education the video of which you're in and we're gonna we're gonna launch that again in another venue and, you know make sure that the guys are locked in they're not gonna back away and not be harassed and threatened so um, that's going to be probably coming up in the august time frame and we're going to pull together more speakers and stuff and share our concerns about parenting we're we're in worse situation here in illinois right because you know like say if we win the school boards right say we win it all they're all republicans i don't know if you're familiar with governor pritzker just did a couple weeks ago no book banning bill are you familiar with that mm -hmm. yep so now even if we say if we win the school board and we get this nasty books that we want removed from our kids schools we, if we remove them from the schools, then Pritzker comes back and he's going to take our tax dollars and not fund our school. It's a law now in the state of Illinois for schools and libraries. And he's, you know, he claimed that we're like uh, communist regimes um, that are trying to take away the voices of, of, of the LGBTQ community, which is such a lie. There's so many books to help those kids cope, right? This has nothing to do. The only reason LGBTQ came up is that Unfortunately, that's where these bad books are. And I, I get I'm, I'm baffled. Why does an oral sex image prevent suicide for any kind of kid? <laughs> it's just you being in a school. And if you're going to kill yourself for not having an oral sex image in the book, you got more problems than, than, than if you're heterosexual or homosexual. And they're just using it as a na narrative to try to act like we hate these kids. And it's not not true. 
you know, and they know it's not true, right? And they talk about book banning and say, well, why don't we have some Bibles in the school? Oh, no, we can't have Bibles in the yeah. school, right? Uh, well, let's get some C.S. Lew- oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're not really against book banning. They just want to give porn and filth to your children. Um, Terry, what's at stake in this battle? Uh, why, why is this so important? You, you encourage dads to get involved. Why, why is this yeah. so important? I mean, why not just let them do what they want? Yeah, because, you know, again, I'm new to this political game here, I guess, or whatever. It's, it's a serious game. And we're losing. We're in a war. Most most people don't even know we're in a war, and we're losing the war badly. Parents don't even know what's in their kids' schools. i got to go up and down the bleachers and show parents that are not, oh, my God, you know. And then then they're scared to stand up because they'll be labeled or attacked like me. Mm-hmm. And, and so the left, I, I really believe that we're at a teetering point here, right? I mean, so they control social media, the businesses, everything now they they took over ownership of the colleges right a long time ago they've got a lot of control over over the high schools and they're already crept into the grammar schools what they're trying to do in my view is weaken our children right confuse them weaken them so that they'll follow them look at america now what do they say 52 percent of the people aren't proud of america that's like concerning What, what what will be like 10 years from now if they're successful in infiltrating high school and grammar school we're done so it's so important to fight for our children. We, you know, we're fighting for their their lives and their futures. And parents got to get involved. Everybody's got to get involved. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more, Terry. Um, we're just about out of time, but are, are you ever concerned for your personal safety? I mean, you've been attacked worse than most of the people I know in the United States who've been in this battle. So yeah, I mean, you must be very effective. And I think it's partly because you're in Illinois. But are, are you ever worried about your own safety, about the safety of your children? I, I'd have concerns for my children. Again, I remember I was a Southwest Side Italian guy. So I'm, uh, <laughs> even at our event, because I, I think you you left beforehand, I went out and confronted all of them by myself. And, and the funny thing is, you know, they're yelling. You know how they are, right? By the time I left, the one guy was yelling for the police to help him. Right? <laughs> one, so so I went out there myself. I was still like you know under under the treatment and stuff, right? But. I, I was like, I got to go out there and confront one of these, you know, like, I, you know, with everything going on, one of my enemies is out there and uh, he confronted me, but then he kind of, you know, tailed it a little bit at the end there because, uh, um, so, so am I, am I personally worried for my safety? Uh, no, you know, my, ch- my, you know, I'm worried my kids in school and stuff, but these guys, they, these, these people are cowards, you know, physically they're cowards when you confront them, they hide behind fake names and keep, they're caught. Co- they're really cowards, right? They're, yeah. they're tasty white pencil neck basement dwellers that have no courage. And then when the Antifa guys come out, right, they got to be outnumbered if they're going to get in front of the police or like many of our protests. You see them. I got them on camera. They go up to the police. Oh, you got your body camera on? That's to protect them, Antifa guys. The cops hate them. And it's also to pr- not only protect them from the police, but from us. Right. So they get in front of the camera. Oh, your camera on your camera on. It's kind of funny. You know, uh, other than that, they're cowards. These people are cowards. That doesn't mean they can't do anything wrong, you know, or, or illegal or whatever. But we're in a war, and you, you know, I mean, we're in a war, and we got we got to act like it. Terry, what's the best way for people to follow you to uh, get up uh, with uh, with your organization, uh, the the chapter that you lead in Illinois? How can people connect with you? My Twitter is at Terry Newsom three fifty seven. Excellent. Terry Newsom, president of the Illinois chapter of U.S. Parents Involved in Education. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for all that you're doing for the kids. We appreciate it. And please keep us updated. Thank you. All righty, folks. That was Terry Newsom. I hope you enjoyed. Share this out with other people across the country who may need some encouragement to get involved on behalf of our children. I'm Alex Newman. This is Conversations That Matter for the New American Magazine. Thanks for watching. Until next time, God bless you all. In 1988, the John Birch Society produced a documentary so predictive, it's as though they had a time machine. Out of Control, Immigration, Invasion was produced and hosted by investigative reporter William F. Jasper and looks at the growing problem of unrestricted illegal immigration that, in 1988, already saw upwards of 10 to 20 million illegal aliens within the borders of the U.S. Unknown agents from around the world using the southern border as easy entry. Certainly, some are innocent families escaping hardship, but also certainly some are criminals, potentially terrorists. Is it not appropriate that there be some criteria for the entry of any sovereign nation? Why should the U.S. be different than Canada, Germany, Russia, Japan, or every other country on the planet? Out of control, immigration invasion. Watch this time capsule of prescient wisdom at thenewamerican.com slash out of control.